Hi, I am in a new place now. I moved out, if you didn't notice last video. It is now time to play the game of what can my neighbors hear and what can they not hear? A lovely commenter reminded me that I needed to still do the Trials of Apollo video, and I'm not mad about that because I needed a kick in the ass to uh, finally finish the fucking series because I promise you, I read the first two books, like, back in September, and I just, I just didn't read the last three. I think in my brain it was like, you can take a break. The last book isn't out until October. And then I just never read the last three. And then I finally, yes, within a week or two, two weeks, I have read the th last three books. I don't know why I'm like this. It makes my life so hard being like this. But anyways, I finally finished them. Here are my annotations of the Trials of Apollo. Nick from several months ago wrote down on this first annotation that the haikus in front of every chapter were funny. Since writing that, I started to ignore them altogether because at a certain point, um, you could tell Rick was tired of writing haikus. And you know, I cannot blame him for being tired of writing haikus. I would also be tired of writing haikus after writing hundreds. Some of them were genuinely funny. Like the very, very last haiku was hilarious. I started to ignore them. <laughs> I love how Rick put Percy in the first book just to appease us and then essentially did the Rick equivalent of saying, let him rest, you fucking heathens. I respect him for that. And here, several months ago, I put, uh, ever so eloquently, Apollo is the definition of a by disaster. And I was right. That's the best representation you're going to get, bisexuals. Nico calling Will his significant annoyance. That's adorable. I would like more. The fact that Nico and Will are abusing Will's powers as like the camp doctor to allow Nico to sit at, you know, their lunch table. That's adorable. I want more. Apollo saying that he invented mansplaining made me lose my shit. Throughout the books, the only thing I could think was, holy shit, Apollo is the worst kind of man. When women complain about men, Apollo is what they're complaining about, and he just confirmed it by, you know, outwardly saying that he invented mansplaining. Hilarious. Rick, you're a comedian. Apollo confirming that, like, a male god and, like, a male mortal can, you know, like, have a baby is really dope. That's super cool, Rick. But, like, my question is, like, how? Where, where does it come from? And it does not answer my question about Aphrodite and whether or not she is preggers for nine months. I, I have so many questions about the birthing of demigod children. I'm fascinated by it. And now it, Rick has thrown more shit into the cogs for me to just be like, well, how does that happen, Rick? I have questions, Rick. And uh, here, um, Nick from, um, you know, six months ago wrote, Bro, demigods can just reattach limbs? Jesus fucking Christ. I feel like that's an appropriate reaction to that. And I also wrote, Big Ants? Thanks, Rick. I hate it. I also think that's an appropriate reaction uh, to Big Ants. Um, I, I, small ants, kind of annoying as it is. I don't think we need big ones. I'm fine. Um, you could take it back. And here, Nick wrote, I can't believe... Apollo is just going to high school musical his way through this. He did. He did kind of high school musical his way through shit. That statement becomes less true as you get to the later books and the series gets a bit darker. Meg went through some serious gaslighting. Holy shit. And here I wrote, Bruh, I can't believe Percy Jackson always saving everybody's ass. Let the guy rest. I was right. The Leo slapping party had me wheezing. That is fucking hilarious. Rick, you're a comedian. And here I wrote down, Oh my god, Rick included lesbians. Let's go. This one is for the gays. 
Now, if only Rick had a little bit more ethnic sensitivity. Rick, quote, Rick willingly wrote lol into his books. I have to kill him now, unquote. There are consequences for your actions, Rick. And here I wrote, let Rick say fuck. And you know what? To add on to that, if Rick can say fuck, Percy Jackson can say fuck. And I think that's where I'm going with that. I would like Percy Jackson to be able to say fuck. God, Meg reminds me of my little sister when she was a child. Genuinely just a little gremlin. Like that just, that just sounds like my sister, to be honest. Grover, let's go. Okay, but I do believe now, once again, I wrote this several months ago. However, mayhaps I was right. It said that Grover looked 17, right? Okay, you with me? Don't satyrs age differently? He should still look younger than Percy Jackson because satyrs age slower than humans do. So why does Grover look the same age as Percy? That's my question. I think Rick overlooked that. I am kind of happy that Rick wrote in Piper and Jason breaking up because that relationship wasn't stable from the beginning and I never approved of it. They were manipulated into that relationship almost. It just, it's a bad situation and maybe not the greatest way to start off a, a relationship. So I was glad that Rick saw that and like broke it off. Meg reminded me several times throughout <laughs> the entire series that these demigod kids are way too young to be doing what they do. What is she, 11 throughout the series? She's 11 and she's just murdering people. No matter how much I disliked Jason Grace's character, I still find it kind of shitty that he's supposed to die to these, you know, egomaniac, obnoxious emperors that turn themselves into gods and shit and not die in the first two Titan Wars that he was in. Like, I don't know, it feels like surviving, falling off a cliff and being struck by lightning at the same time only to die by choking on calamari. It just feels feels like a waste. I think Rick realized that it was kind of very unrealistic that all of the seven would survive every time, you know? Once again, it's a book about demigods, technically for children. It's not supposed to be realistic, I suppose, but I do think that was one of my critiques the first time. And I suppose it was bound to happen at some point that somebody, like a main character, was going to die. But it, it just, it, it feels like it didn't do him justice. It just kind of felt shitty because he survived like two Titan Wars, you know, whatever he did in the first one. I don't really remember what he did in the first Titan War. Only to die to this egomaniac emperor that made himself a very, very, very minor god. Like, it just... It feels shitty, you know? One of the things I kept thinking throughout this series after it was said was like, how does Jason expect Apollo to remember what it's like being human when he didn't remember last time? Because if I'm remembering correctly, this is not the first time that Apollo has been punished like this. Apollo has been uh, doomed to mortality until, you know, his quests are finished, right? My question is, what's different about this time from the last time? Because he didn't remember last time, obviously. He didn't learn or remember being human last time, so what makes Jason Grace or Op uh, Apollo think that it's going to happen this time? What, what's different? You know? I don't know. I just don't have faith in it. <laughs> the amount of times Meg just wanted to fucking murk someone is uh, kind of concerning. She's 11. I didn't like Jason that much, but his death still hurt a little. Quote, Frank was giving me the pleading teddy bear eyes, unquote. Aw, Frank. Okay, so later in the series, it was confirmed that Leto was pregnant with Artemis and Apollo, which confirms that gods do get pregnant. But my question still stands, does that happen with Aphrodite when she fucks mortals? What, what happens when Aphrodite 
things. I need to know. I have questions, Rick. Here in this annotation, I come to the conclusion that maybe Reyna is actually Arrow Ace. Also, the way she rejected Apollo was cathartic. That's exactly what he needed. He also like barely knew her and asked her to be his girlfriend. Like, dude, put your dick away, okay? You don't know her. So if the Greek gods exist still in this universe because of people believing in them, right? Like all other gods and whatnot. Shouldn't they be dead then? Like all of them? Because nobody actually believes in the Greek gods anymore? Or is it just like the memory of them keeping them alive? Because nobody actually like believes in Greek gods unless I am severely lacking some important information but maybe it is just like you know telling the stories of these greek gods that's keeping them alive and not necessarily the belief i'm just gonna go with that i can handle jason dying but if frank had died i would have thrown a coup and here i wrote god frank is so fucking cool bro and i was right talia and jason Technically being Apollo's half-siblings is still weird, bro. Yeah, uh, I can't get over it still. Can't stop thinking about it. The um, God family tree upsets me personally. Because Rick mentioned it several times throughout this series, I think that was his way of coping and coming to terms with the fact that he really fucked up. <laughs> and here I wrote, quote, I can't believe Reyna rejected Apollo so hard that she's now finally coming to terms with being Arrow Ace. Yo, Reyna joined the hunt? Fuck yeah. It's kinda helping my theory that she's Arrow Ace though. Hazel and Frank side by side as co-praetors? Sign me the fuck up, dude. Lavinia is doing so much for the unhinged lesbian community. There are two qualifications to be an unhinged lesbian. Be unhinged, be a lesbian. Lavinia fits both of those. Apollo calling Will his beautiful son got me. It really did. It got me right in the heart. I love Will Solis so much. And here I wrote, quote, God, I just want Nico to get a break every once in a while, dear God, unquote. Yeah, just give Nico a fucking break, dude. Poor kid just needs therapy. Nico and Will are very cute. That is all I have to say. Will Solis can glow. That is so fucking dope. Having dealt with gaslighting and watching my mother get gaslighted, um, it was kind of triggering to watch uh, Nero uh, interact with Meg. It felt a little too real, uh, in my opinion. I could only imagine Gollum when Rick was describing the troglodytes. Like, I can only imagine, like, an army of Gollums. And honestly, I think that's not far from the truth. <laughs> Gollums with hats. And here I wrote, Nico is so fucking cool, bro. Yeah. Nico is so fucking cool, bro. Nico is one of those situations as a queer man, especially when I was a kid, where I didn't know if I wanted to be him or if I had a crush on him. Turns out I want to be Nico and have a crush on Will Solis. I figured it out. It only took a decade. <laughs> Rick referencing BTS in the last book really just it th threw me for a loop. I just, I, that was not the crossover I expected. I'm gonna be real. Bro, why does Nico want to go back to Tataris? Like, bro, just fucking rest, dude. Come on, man. Piper is sapphic? Rick, you have outdone yourself, buddy. You have done it now. The ending was kind of emotional for a lot of reasons, just because, like, I know that this is going to be, like, the last book that Rick ever makes about Camp Half-Blood. And like, that's kind of bittersweet, you know? Like, I'm glad that he's finally putting a cap on it so he doesn't, you know, become JK Rowling. But you're also just kind of like mourning a little bit, you know? Like you're, you're mourning Camp Half-Blood. And I think the montage of uh, Apollo going to different places with different people 
and interacting with them in that those last two chapters really was a, a good way to end it. It really did feel like, you know, an emotional montage you'd see at the end of a movie. It just felt appropriate. So yeah, that is the, the bittersweet ending to uh, my Camp Half-Blood annotations. It only took several months. I can say I'll do things, but I cannot promise that I will do them in an appropriate amount of time.